Hi, my name is Stephanie. Welcome to Teen Esteem Ed Talks. I'm a mental health activist and advocate. I speak, I write, and I'm also on the board of directors for the San Francisco chapter of the National Alliance on Mental Illness. But the thing that has inspired my advocacy efforts has been my daughter, who has struggled with a mental health condition since the time she was a little girl. And I've helped her navigate her pathology and really struggled with her to get the right kinds of treatment. So as a parent of a child with a mental health condition, I wanted to talk to you about how common it is in mental illness is in children and what some of the things you can do about it. So first, a few facts about, about mental illness and, and youth and children. 20% of 13 to 18-year-olds live with a mental health condition. Um, that's staggering. That's on par with adult statistics. So if there's a classroom of 25 students, at least five of them are going to be struggling. 17% of high school students seriously consider suicide. Now, that's a very troubling statistic. Um, we see the repercussions of that in the news, and it's, it's, it's tragic. Um, and that statistic needs to be reduced, if not eliminated entirely. 50% of 8- to 15-year-olds with a mental health condition don't receive treatment. And that's not surprising. A lot of the times, um, the symptoms for their mental illness um, aren't recognized, or they're attributed to something else, or they're attributed to teen angst. So, so no one knows that they have a mental health condition, and subsequently, they don't receive any kind of treatment until much later. And the average delay between the onset of symptoms and treatment is about 8 to 10 years. That's not surprising either. If their mental illness isn't recognized, if their mental illness um, is attributed to something else, um, they're probably not going to get help until they're much later into their adult life, in which case the symptoms have, have progressed um, and their illness is much harder to treat. But the risks of not intervening early um, can sometimes be very serious. 50% of students who are over the age of 14 with a mental health condition drop out of high school. 70, 70 percent of youth in juvenile justice systems have some kind of mental health condition, and they're probably not getting treated when they're incarcerated. More than 90 percent of youth who die by suicide had at least one mental health condition. Chances are it wasn't addressed or recognized, and they probably didn't receive treatment. So what are some of the steps to early intervention? Well, there's, there's four. Know the warning signs, which I'll talk about in, in just a minute. Reach out and share concerns, not just with your child, although that's very important. You need to open up that pathway of communication um, and, and develop trust so they can feel free to talk about their condition, but also with the community around them, um, with their teachers, with friends, neighbors, um, and create a really strong support network because the more support that your child has in, in navigating this very confusing time, um, the greater of the chance that they'll experience success or they'll, they'll be treated successfully. Develop strategies to promote success and wellness. Um, have a plan. Have a plan in mind um, how you're going to treat um, your child's mental illness or how you're going to approach it. Um, and then reach out to resources and support. So what are the warning signs? Well, first, I want to preface, <laughs> as a parent of a mental health, of a child with a mental health condition, um, it's very confusing. A lot of times, teens, um, they, there's a lot of overlap in the symptoms. They're, you know, they are moody, they, are, they isolate themselves, they, are, they get angry. Um, but, but there is a way to distinguish, and um, some of the ways to distinguish are intensity of symptoms, um, duration, and frequency. So any one of those things, if there's, um, you see these symptoms lasting a long time, it might be cause for concern. So I'll go over the warning signs. Feeling very sad or withdrawn for more than two weeks. Severe out-of-control behaviors. Sudden overwhelming fear for no reason. Severe mood swings. Um, now, there again, teenagers are moody, but if there's a very big delta and there are very low lows and there are very high highs, um, that might be cause for concern, it might be something to address. <clears throat> Dramatic changes in behavior. 
If you know your child was social and outgoing and gregarious, and all of a sudden they're isolating themselves and sad and, um, and not wanting to talk to anybody, that's a big personality change, and it's worth looking into. Or if they're, they were a good student, um, and, and all of a sudden they're receiving failing grades, you know, that's something to look into. Extreme difficulty concentrating or staying still, intense worries or fears, not eating, which can be a sign of an, an eating disorder. Um, it can also be an indication of a greater mental health problem. Repeated use of drugs and alcohol. Now there again, teenagers, high school students, they, ex they experiment, you know, that's no secret. Um, they experiment with, with drugs and alcohol. But if they're using these substances um, a lot, if they're using them frequently, or if they're using them in a way to escape or self-medicate, that's probably an indication that they're dealing with some kind of mental health condition. Um, and of course, trying to harm oneself. <clears throat> um, obviously, suicide attempts, but any kind of self-harm, you know, cutting or self-destructive behaviors. Um, so there's a lot that we can do. Um, and I could spend probably hours talking about all the things, that, the steps that we need to take, um, which we don't have time for. But, but the, one of the things I want to reinforce and to impart um, is to be a partner, be, be gentle, sympathetic. Don't question if they feel the way they do or whether um, their thinking is good or bad. Um, they need you as a partner and as a collaborator um, to help them through this very confusing time that they don't understand themselves even. Um, and there are resources. If you're concerned about your child um, talking about suicide or, or potential suicide attempts um, or suicide, suicidal ideations, um, there are resources. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline um, is, is, a, is a wonderful um, resource. Call them anytime, they will give you direction, resources, point you to organizations, and basically hold your hand through this process, um, this, this very terrifying process for parents. Another organization that is, um, does amazing work is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Uh, they're a national organization. Um, they have hundreds of chapters all over the country. There's probably a chapter in your county, um, and they have a wealth of um, resources, services, trainings, classes. They help answer questions, and then they direct you to the people who, who can better answer your questions. Um, find the local NAMI affiliate. Um, they are totally willing to help, and that's what they do. So I want to conclude by saying, as a parent of a child with a mental health condition, I know parenting is tough. It's hard. Um, parenting teens is even harder. Um, and parenting teens with a mental health condition can be excruciating. I know, you're not alone. But there are resources. There is help available. And just remember, you are not alone. Thank you.